I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to do before you hit that Canvas Publish button. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be continuing my series. This is kind of like the last one. So we are gonna go over exporting your course, putting it into your district's Canvas instance account, cross-listing. It's gonna be a good video. Let's finish up with getting your course ready for your students. Our sandbox course in our free for teachers version is done. Now the school year is about to begin and we've worked really hard all summer editing this course, adding assignments, working on our template. Now we need to take this course, we need to place it into our school's Canvas instance account. So how are we going to do that? So basically, just so you guys have a clear picture of this, I am taking this course that I've created with you guys through all of these different videos we are taking this course and we are going to place it into this Canvas instance, my Canvas Queen account. So to do that, we're going to enter into the course that we've been working on and we're going to go to settings. From settings, we're going to go to this lovely button called export course content. And from here, we are going to create a course export. So you can see I've done it in the past, um, but we're going to create a new one. This will take some time. It just kind of depends on how much content is in your course. You can see it's starting to load for me now. All right, so it's done. It has created an export. It'll label it as a new export. So I can select that and now it will download onto my computer as a file. That file is called a course export and it's ending with .imscc. So just remember that for when we go and find it. So now I'm going to come over to my institution canvas course and we are going to go so here's my sandbox course and you'll see I have one two three courses that were created for me by my school district so I'm gonna go into my sandbox course and we're going to enter this and you'll see there's nothing here so to add everything that I've completed within the free for teachers version of canvas I'm just gonna go back to settings and then instead of export course content this time we're gonna click import course content and select one. This time you want to select Canvas course export package because that is the file that we exported. Now we're importing it. So I'm going to click choose the file and now here it is in my most recent downloads and again it's ending in IMSCC. This is the correct file. So let me move myself here and then we'll click open. And now it's ready for me to import whatever content I want. I am going to select all content. Now, if you don't want all the content, that's completely up to you at this point. You can select the specific content, but since this is a course that I've been working on and I know that I want everything in it to go into my sandbox course, I am going to click all course content import and it will load all of that content. It takes a little bit of time again it'll be longer if you have a bigger course. There we go. Now it's done. And when I click home, I have my homepage that I created in the free for teachers course. I can go to my modules and see everything is here, which is yay. It's so exciting. You can transfer content from one instance to another. So everything is here. It's great. It's ready to go. Now you might be asking, why didn't you just import all of this stuff into to your live course where you're going to have students and they're going to use it. Well, the reason why I didn't do that is because I have three separate courses right now with three separate rosters of students and I want to combine them all into one course. And if I were to import any content into these three live, almost live, because they're not published, courses, all of my content would automatically disappear the second that I combined them all. I'll 
always have a sandbox course where I have the content untouched and saved and then I move everything from that sandbox course over into my live course after I've done cross-listing. So let me walk you through what cross-listing looks like and how to complete it. So you'll see I have these three science courses. I have period one, period two, period three, but they're all going to have the same content. So instead of having three separate courses, I'm going to combine them all and that way I can have one course with all of my content. We are going to select period one. I just like to do period one. You can select any course though. And we're going to go to settings. From settings, we're going to find what's called the SIS ID. Now, what is the SIS ID? SIS stands for Student Information System. So this might be, for example, Infinite Campus, Power School, Aries, all of those fancy places with all the student information. And so your SIS actually generates rosters that sync into Canvas and then you get courses in Canvas. So that's how that works. So what we need to do is we need to copy this SIS ID from the course that I am going to use as the main course. So all students will be in period one. So I have copied the code and I am now going to go back to the dashboard and go to period two. From period two, we're just gonna go back to settings and you'll see I have a different SIS ID for this course, but we're gonna leave it there. I'm gonna scroll up to sections and we're going to click on the name of this section and it gives us the option over here on the right side to cross list the section. So we'll select this, enter that course course ID number and it will appear right there for me to cross list this section. The other option is to like type the name of it and it'll give me a list of all of my courses. So I could select, oh, this is the one period two is what I want. But if you end up having a long list of courses over the years, uh, this can get a little bit complicated and human error is more likely to occur when you search for it versus you just copy and paste the code of the course directly in. So now it's here. This is where I want this course to go to. I want it to become period one. So I'm now going to select cross list this section and you'll notice now instead of seeing seeing period two up here, it now sits period one. So those courses have now combined together. So how you can tell if it worked appropriately is if you go back to settings and sections, you will now see the two sections are together, which is great. You probably will also see a list of students, but I don't have any students in my course, so that's why it's not a longer list here. But the two sections are together. I have science period one. We are good to go. Let's do it one more time. So I'm going to go to my dashboard here, and you'll see that that course already combined with my period one because period two is no longer on my dashboard. So now we'll go into period three and we'll go back to settings, go up to sections, click on the section, cross list the section, paste in my code. I want period one. This is great. Select cross list and you'll notice that P3 turned into P1. I'm just going to double check that I have the correct section. So now here they are. Period one, two, and three are all combined into one course. And when I go to the dashboard, I only have one course that will be left live right on my dashboard. So I have my sandbox course and my period one course. So now that I have my sandbox done, I've cross listed all of my courses. Now what I can do without error is I can import my course content. So I'm going to import content. We're going to select this time copy a canvas course and I will type in sandbox course 24 include all content. You can too, if you have like, let's say you have due dates, you can actually remove all of them, which is great. Import the content and now it'll take a few minutes. It now says it's completed after loading. We can now go to the homepage and now I have all of my content that I've created right here in my live course, almost ready for students to see. So the other thing you should make sure, as you can kind of see here, is my teacher template is published because I wanted to make sure that everything worked. So we're gonna unpublish this entire module Oop, and make sure you click end all items. You can always go up to a module. So here's like our mock module one. I'll publish everything in here. Um, 
but can always select the three dots to a module. So you can send this module to another teacher in your institution. Now that we're in your institution's Canvas account, uh, we can type in any teacher here and it will send it directly to that teacher. So I don't have any other teachers right now, but I'm gonna just type in my Gmail. Here I am, so I select my name and then I click send. When I hit refresh, now I have this notification on my account. When I go to account and go to shared content, now I have the ability to see, okay, do I want to import this? I'll just preview what it is right now. We've got a module here with an assignment, a lesson page, all of that, that looks great. And now I can either import it into a course or I can remove it entirely. So that's one one way to share content. The other way to share content is going back to the three dots and copying to. When you copy to a specific course, it has to be a course obviously that you, the teacher, are enrolled in. So we could always copy it to, let's say I have this math course and I can copy it over to the math course directly right from here. To get this course ready for your students, ready to publish, the other thing that you will need to do before you click publish is you probably want to add some sort of student announcement. So we're going to create an announcement over here. Announcements are great because they provide students with quick information. So we can select announcement and we can do welcome to the course. You can give a basic overview and then have the following options with an announcement. I can allow participants to comment. I don't need that. Allow liking. All these other things I don't really need. Then I can set a date. So we can do, okay, tomorrow, let's just say is the first day of school. And so that's when it's going to be available. And I'm not going to do an until date, or maybe I will, maybe I'll make it that week long uh, due date. So now all I have to do is I click save. And now I have this announcement for my students ready to go. It will not be visible until August 26 at 12am. The other thing I can do to make this announcement more visible to students so they're not missing it when they first enter my course. I actually have the option within my course settings to scroll all the way down and we can go to this box right here where it says show recent announcements on course homepage. Now three actually is the default but it can get kind of long. I actually like to just have one because then the most important one is at the top. So we'll just click update course details and you'll see on the homepage now. Oh it's because the announcement isn't for tomorrow. Let's edit this this right here. So I'll just click the three dots, click edit, and we will make the date. Let's do it for today. Send it. So now here we go at the top. Here is what it looks like with your most recent announcements. And then you have your homepage at the bottom. Announcements are awesome, especially so beginning of the course. And I would also say when you're absent and you have some sort of agenda that students maybe need to go through, you can put out sick and then all of the information that they're required required to do within your Canvas course. So we have prepared our course to be published. We're ready to go, ready to start the school year. All we have to do to publish your course is go over to the course status and we'll click from unpublished to published. Now the course is ready for your students to view. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this series so far. Again, I've pretty much taught you up to this point everything you need to know to get started with your Canvas course. I am continuing on with this series. We're gonna get into some more details. I'm really excited for that. So I hope that you subscribe, stick around for a while, and hang out with me as we continue on our K-12 Canvas journey. I hope to see you all in the next video. All right, guys, bye.